Welcome to today's video, where we'll cover a basic neurological examination that emphasizes cervical and lumbar myotomes. By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of cervical and lumbar myotomes and be more clinically proficient in performing a structured neurological examination. I encourage you to watch this video multiple times and practice with your peers to perfect your technique. To begin, let's discuss myotomes. Myotomes are a group of muscles that are innervated by a single nerve. For instance, the C5 nerve assists in shoulder abduction. Therefore, if the C5 nerve is compromised, the patient will have difficulty abducting their arm. By testing cervical and lumbar myotomes, we can determine the presence of a nerve root compression or injury. Testing cervical and lumbar myotomes involve assessing the strength of specific muscle groups that are innervated by the spinal nerves. Let's dive into the cervical myotomes and their function. The C4 nerve is responsible for shoulder shrugging. Test this by asking the patient to shrug their shoulder. C5 nerve is responsible for shoulder abduction. Test this by asking the patient to lift their arm up. The C6 nerve is responsible for arm flexion and wrist extension. Test this by asking the patient to flex their arm like they are performing a bicep curl. Also, you can ask the patient to extend their wrist back and gently apply pressure down. The C7 nerve is responsible for arm extension and wrist flexion. Test this by asking the patient to push your arm as if they're extending their arm, and they can also flex their wrist. The C8 nerve is responsible for hand grip or finger flexion. Test this by asking the patient to squeeze your hand. The T1 nerve is responsible for finger abduction. Ask the patient to spread their fingers apart. We need to discuss neuropraxia, which is a type of nerve injury that occurs when a nerve is stretched or compressed. This injury is relatively mild and usually results in temporary symptoms. Following surgery, the most common symptom of neuropraxia is weakness, especially with arm abduction, as C5 nerve palsy is the most common after a posterior cervical laminoplasty. Although not common, we can also see C6, C7, C8, and rarely T1 neuropraxia. Neuropraxia can occur following surgery, but can also present a few days to weeks after surgery. When you suspect a neuropraxia, it's essential to reach out to the surgical team so that we can intervene appropriately. Neuropraxia is not unique to spine surgery, but can also occur during surgeries such as shoulder surgery, knee surgery, and hip surgery. Now let's move on to lumbar myotomes. The L2 nerve is responsible for hip flexion. Ask your patient to bend their knee up to their chest. L3, L4 nerve is responsible for knee extension and ankle dorsiflexion. Ask the patient to extend their knee out, and they can also point their toes towards the ceiling. The L5 nerve is responsible for knee flexion and big toe dorsiflexion. Ask the patient to bend their knee, and they can also point their big toe up, testing the hallux. The S1 nerve is responsible for plantar flexion. Test this by asking the patient to walk on their tippy toes. Now let's discuss the most crucial slide. This is the motor grade examination. This examination helps us understand the patient better because weakness in the setting following surgery is an important clue for neurological concern. Therefore, it's crucial to understand this slide. The motor grade is graded from zero to five. Zero means no contraction. One is a flicker. Two is movement with gravity eliminated. Three is anti-gravity or against gravity, moving up and down. Four is movement against gravity with mild resistance. Five is movement against gravity with resistance or normal strength. In conclusion, performing a thorough neurological examination is an essential part of assessing patients with potential nerve root compression or injury. Cervical and lumbar myotome testing can help determine the affected nerve roots and the location of the pathology. Neuropraxia is a type of nerve injury that is relatively mild and temporary. 
but it is important to recognize and report any suspected cases to the surgical team. The mortar grade examination is a vital component of the neurological assessment, as it helps determine the level of weakness and provides valuable information for the diagnosis and management of the patient. I hope this video has been helpful in understanding the basics of neurological examination, specifically cervical and lumbar myotomes, and the mortar grade examination. Please feel free to watch this video several times and practice with your peers to become more clinically proficient. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more educational content. Thank you.